Warning. The following clip is about the 1976 album The Third Reich and Roll by The Residents. The record's artwork and advertising utilized swastikas, Nazi uniforms, as well as depictions of Adolf Hitler. We here at ResTube are opposed to fascism or discrimination of any kind and do not intend to offend by showing or discussing the symbols used for the project, nor do we believe that the residents intended to offend. If you are sensitive to these symbols, we advise you not to watch this video. Hey guys, I'm Danny Riggs, and welcome to Res History Episode 3 here on ResTube. Today we'll be taking a look at the second LP release by the group, The Third Reich and Roll. Some would say that not available should come first, including the order of the releases that is featured in Uncle Willie's book and the Cryptic Guide, but I've decided to go in the order in which the projects were released, so The Third Reich and Roll it is. The album was recorded in October 1974 and October of 1975. In the booklet of the Cherry Red Preserved series, Jim Knipfel revealed that this year-long gap was due to the residents having problems coordinating their vacation time from their regular jobs. The LP was released on February 1st, 1967. The first edition was a run of 1,000 copies housed in a sleeve that featured a hand-colored green and orange carrot. The record is the first of many concept albums to be released by the group. It is also the first example of what could be called music about music, a concept that they also visited multiple times. And speaking of concept, the concept is simple. Well, sort of. As with the song Boots on Meet the Residents, this album features residential reworkings of the music of other people. Simple enough. This time it is the popular music of the 1960s that they have their sights set on. Still simple, right? Except that this time there are only two tracks, one filling each side of the LP that often segue into each other, sometimes with sound effects added, and more often than not, only recognizable by their lyrics. Okay, it's not simple. The intent was to portray the music industry of the 60s as a quasi-fascist mechanism, churning out mostly love songs and dictating to the unsuspecting youth what they should deem cool and therefore, of course, buy. Hence the artwork. Ah, the artwork. You have been warned. The cover of the album depicts Dick Clark clad in a uniform, a trench coat along with a swastika armband, and an iron cross. Dick Clark was a radio DJ that rose to fame in America as the host and producer of the TV show American Bandstand from 1956 to 1989. On the TV show, teens danced to top 40 music that Dick Clark would introduce, and each episode featured at least one live performer or band that would, in most cases, lip sync one of their current songs. According to Wikipedia, these musical guests included a variety of acts ranging from Jerry Lee Lewis to Run DMC. Let that sink in for a minute. An interesting side note, in 1960, Dick Clark testified under oath that he had received gifts or money and that he somehow benefited from at least 27% of his playlist. If you want to find out more about that scandal, Google Payola Dick Clark. Seeing that it was Clark who told the youth of America what was cool and hip and all of those other far-out groovy words, it's understandable that the residents would decide to portray him as the fewer of American music. Let's take a look at the cover. Surrounding Obersturmbannführer Clark. Sorry, sorry. Surrounding Commander Clark of the Cool Music Army, there are multiple mini-Hitlers, most of which seem to be dancing. I especially like these two. Look at them, all cute doing their rock and roll dance moves. These two couples seem to be arguing. Serves him right. Bad Hitler. 
bad Hitler. <clears throat> in his hand, Clark is holding a carrot, much like the carrot one might put on a stick to get a horse to move in a certain direction. Starting in the top left corner, the text on the front reads, the residents present the Third Reich and Roll. This side explains why Hitler was a vegetarian. More about that in a minute. Ralph Records, first pressing 1,000 discs. There's an S here, which might have something to do with side two of the album, but I can't be sure. Here we read, produced by Residence Unincorporated. Man, does that name just keep on popping up. And jacket by Porno Slash Graphics. I don't know if Homer Flynn also designed the font on this album, but it fits the concept perfectly. The back of the record also reads, The Residents present the Third Reich and Roll. This side is usually swastikas on parade. Again, more on that after we get through the artwork and the liner notes. See Vileness Fats, coming soon to a theater or drive-in near you. Yes, they're still hyping their first feature film. RR1075, the catalog number of the record, recorded at El Ralfo Studio, which was probably named after Sun Ra's studio, El Saturn. Or was it El Saturno? I think it was El Saturn. And last, World Series 74 to 75, which were the time periods in which the record was recorded. If you're unfamiliar with the World Series, it is the championship of the American Baseball Leagues. The artwork centered in the middle of the back cover could be deemed even more offensive than the front. Six stylized Nazi eagles surrounding a swastika imposed on top of a Star of David. Whoa. An insert came with the first pressing and it reads as follows. Why do the residents hate the Beatles? That was a popular question a couple of years ago when Ralph Records released the residents' first album, Meet the Residents. Not everyone appreciated seeing their beetle gods with fangs and cross eyes, not to mention the erratic non-music music, but after all, that was a couple of years ago. Then there was the second album. Produced in total secrecy, the album is reportedly a conceptualization on the theory of obscurity as applied to phonetic organization as originally put forth by the Bavarian avant-gardist N. Sonata, with whom the residents are known to have worked about five years ago. According to the theory of obscurity, the LP cannot be released until its makers literally forget it exists. Now in the more traditional vein, the residents announced the release of their third LP, The Third Reich and Roll. Already people are speculating whether the residents are hinting that rock and roll has brainwashed the youth of the world. When confronted with this possible philosophy, they replied, well, it may be true, or it may not, but we wanted to kick out the jams and get it on. Those are two popular song names of the time. Kick out the jams by MC5 and get it on by Al Green. The third Reich and Roll consists of two suites, Swastikas on Parade and Hitler was a Vegetarian. Both are semi-phonetic interpretations of top 40 rock and roll from the 60s, our roots, say the residents. One critic has suggested that the residents are jumping on the German rock bandwagon. What? exclaimed one resident, while three others started singing God Bless America. Es eben ein Rechtsfall von gut alt Amerikaner Kennerweis, he preached with a wink. We'll get to the credits in a minute. But before that, the second album they were talking about is, of course, not available. And like I said, we're going in the order of releases, so that will have to wait. But it is interesting to note that they're already talking about it. That last paragraph before the credits of the album is particularly interesting to me. Not only do three residents start singing God Bless America as one starts speaking German. No, the German he's speaking is... Not German. I happen to speak German. I have lived here for decades, after all. And it does contain some German words, a lot of them written wrong, but it was definitely written by someone who did not speak German. Or it was written by someone who wanted to get it wrong. Truthfully, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. 
But the good people at the Meet the Residents wiki helped me out. They translate it as, it's just a rich display of good old American know-how. Thanks a lot for that, guys. I was totally stumped. The last section of text reads, Important message. Residents Unincorporated and Ralph Records freely admit that the riffs, words, and even sometimes the arrangements found on the Third Reich and Roll were lifted shamelessly from the residents' memory of Top 40 Radio of the 60s. We, as the parent company, support the residents in their tribute to the thousands of little power-mad minds of the music industry who have helped to make us what we are today with an open eye on what we can make them tomorrow. That last sentence really sums up the concept for the project for me. Be power mad music industry with an eye on what we can make them tomorrow. Mundane mushy music makes the most money. It was true back then. And if you take a look at popular music today, sadly, very little has changed. Before we get to the credits, one last look at the artwork. Both sides of the record have labels that also feature swastikas. I don't have this on LP, but I imagine seeing those swastikas spinning around as the record plays is ridiculous. In a good way, of course. The credits attribute a stunning array of instruments to the residents. Vocals, drums, soprano sax, alto sax, cornet, French horn, clarinet, trombone, synthesizers, pipe organ, xylophone, piped snooter, piped snooter, piped snooter, electric violin, piano, organ, guitars, Oud, or is it pronounced oud, bass, garbage drums, stretch global, koto, accordion, hanging lamp, and rub board by the residents. Additional vocals by Pamela Zabak and Peggy Honeydew. Fancy electric guitar by the former bass player of the front line. This was Gary Phillips, who played guitar on the Hey Jude section of Side 2. He was an employee at Rather Rip Records in Berkeley when the residents made contact with him. According to Never Known Questions by Ian Shirley, I was working one night at Rather Rip Records. Somebody called and asked if there was a guitar player who could add a part to their record. I walked into this big warehouse and somebody asked me if I know Hey Jude. I said sure, and he asked me if I knew Sympathy for the Devil. I said sure again, and he said that was all they wanted me to play on the end of their record. I got my portable tape recorder and plugged into that. I didn't even use an amplifier. All I can remember is these enormous sponge rubber broccolis lying around everywhere. They looked exactly like the real thing. Right shape, right color, and everything. Only they were bigger than me. Phillips was also mentioned by Hardy Fox in Hacienda Bridge newsletter number 15. The poodles almost appear courtesy of Rather Rip Records. What meaning does this have? I have no idea. The net search reveals a band called the Poodles that were a Swedish glam metal band formed in 2005. So it wasn't that. Third Reich and Roll was produced by Residents Unincorporated. Now to those two aforementioned statements from the front and back cover. It seems we might have another case of name confusion pertaining to the two tracks on this album. Vincent Presley of Secret Records pointed it out in a comment he made on the Santa Dog history clip. According to the etchings of my first pressing of the Third Reich and Roll, the track beginning with Hitler singing Twist is actually side two, so that would mean every pressing since then has the titles reversed. This really seems to add up for me, especially considering that the front of the album says this side explains why Hitler is a vegetarian. 
were the record labels swapped? Um, is the twist in German actually the beginning of side B of this album? I can't even fathom this album not starting with Chubby Checker. Can someone clarify this? If you can, please comment. Now a short technical look at the recording. It's short because I'm not particularly tech savvy. They have recently upgraded from a four track to an eight track reel to reel recorder. The Tascam 38. Ian Shirley wrote in his book, when it came to recording the music, large parts of the album were laid down by taping the original version of the song to be covered on one track and the residents building up overdubs of themselves playing along with it on the rest. Finally, the original version was erased from the tape, leaving only the residents' new interpretation. I would definitely say that that's a unique approach. At least I've never heard of it. And so if the residents' version of the song is in the same speed as the original, chances are it was done exactly that way. And speaking of the original songs, let's take a look at the music that inspired this album. To go into detail about each song used for the project would make this video much too long. If you would like to look into all of them, I suggest this list from the Meet the Residents wiki, www.meettheresidents.fandom.com. Most of the tracks that inspired the album are fairly well known, so I'm only going to elaborate on two samples that were used. First off, the record starts with a direct sample. The German language version of Let's Twist Again, which is called Der Twist Beginnt, performed by Chubby Checker. This track is from Checker's 1962 record Twistin' Round the World, which featured the rocker doing songs in different languages. The other sample on the album is used during Papa's Got a Brand New Bag and is from the original James Brown version of the song. I would have to guess that most listeners probably didn't recognize the Res version of the song, seeing that it is sung in the same gibberishy German as they used for the insert, but that blare from the horns definitely clued everyone in. Aside from those samples on side A, it's also noteworthy that Double Shot of My Baby's Love is also reworked on side A. The organ riff from this song would go on to be one of the motifs in the music of God in Three Persons. And now let's take a look at some different versions of the record. Hi, my name is Val Denham and I'm a Residence fan and a Residence collector. But the album that I want to talk about today is the third Reich and Roll. Check it out. Wow, here's a first edition. Hmm, very nice. You will notice that the back is different to all the editions that came afterwards. And there is this insert, of course, which is upside down. I think they put this insert in to explain what the album is, because some people might have thought this was an album of Hitler speeches or Nazi propaganda. You will notice that the second edition is on different card and it's glossy. That's because this is printed directly onto the cardboard. And the back is different. The liner notes on the first edition are in fact printed there. And what about this baby? This is called the censored version. Yeah. Now, this was done in 1981, uh, reissued in 1985 by Rainbow Records. And I think the initial run of this album was something like 2,500 copies. They wanted to sell this album in Germany. The residents were becoming popular in Germany, but they were told they would have to change the cover because the swastika and any kind of Nazi imagery is illegal in Germany. So instead of doing a new cover, what they did was just print the cover with these blocks of white on and the word censored all over the place. And you can see the back. Wow. Censored, censored, censored. <laughs> and I think that's very funny. I mean, that is amusing. It's the whole idea behind the album cover is a kind of 
uh, piss take, if you will, uh, rather like Mel Brooks' 1967 film The Producers. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. It's funny. It really is. This character here, that is supposed to be Dick Clark from American Bandstand. But I was told that, in fact, this is William Shatner as Captain Kirk from Star Trek. Where did I get this information from? I was told by one of the residents themselves, but they may have been pulling my leg. I'm very easy to fool. So there we have it. The third Reich and Roll. Interesting. Bye y'all. Whoa, Val Denham. Holy sh Thanks for that tidbit on William Shatner, Val. William Shatner as Captain Kirk, as Dick Clark, as Adolf Hitler. Makes perfect sense to me. Oh, and I thought I should mention that you can get totally cool releases by Val on Psychophone Records. You can get totally cool releases by Val on Psychophone Records. Val mentioned the second pressing and the 1985 censored edition, but there was also a CD edition in 1993 and 94 that had altered artwork. For this cover, Hitler is portrayed with a woman, supposedly Madonna, the Queen of Pop, in front of a tree with a snake hanging out of it. The artwork was made by Viergleich 1, a multimedia company in Hamburg, Germany, and was approved by Pornographics. This cover says this side is usually swastikas on parade, giving even more evidence that the track names might have been switched around. The line hyping violinist fats has been changed to Freak Show is coming soon to a multimedia player near you, advertising the then upcoming CD-ROM Freak Show. Before we end this clip, I'd like to take a look at two other editions of the album. In August of 1980, the Third Reich and Roll Collector's Box was sent out to fans who had pre-ordered them. 25 were made, with an additional 5 made as artist proofs. Of the original 25, 12 were auctioned off by the Weird Fan Club label in the fall of 1980. The Cryptic Guide to the Residents describes the project as follows. The third Reich and Roll collector box, probably the most valuable of any single residence item, features a hand-pressed marbled red vinyl edition of the record, with silkscreen sleeve and labels, in a velvet-lined black wooden box with a sliding panel featuring hand-screen versions of the original cover art. Also enclosed are two lithographs, numbered and signed by California artist Nancy Mass Mosen who we all know better as Irene Dogmatic. The entire box is enclosed in a drawstring bag made from a panel of the famous Christo Fence artwork. Fifty marbled albums were actually pressed for the collector's boxes. Thirty found their homes, while the remaining twenty were rejected for cosmetic reasons and were placed in the cryptic archives. In the fall of 1979, during the first pressing of Eskimo, ten copies of the Third Reich and Roll were pressed on white vinyl for some mysterious reason. Most of these also remain in the Cryptic Corporation archives. Geez, to get my hands on one of those. As Elvis sang, if I can dream. And those pictures were really nice to look at, but let's take a look at a video of not one, but two of these suckers. Here we see an unknown mysterious man in a black sleeve t-shirt in front of a table of Third Reich and Rolly goodness. We can see a few of those variants in the background. And here's the front. And that is actually the number one he is pointing to. In the box, we see a postcard picture of Christo's fence. We see a computer printout featured in some of the boxes, but not all of them, about the project, congratulating the owner. Here 
we see the first of two lithographs by Nancy Masmosen, dated 1976, and the second, Dogs and Bondage, as Raoul Brody spoke of in the documentary. There's the envelope for the lithographs. And there's that hand screen printed sleeve that they were talking about. And the record itself. I was told by the owner that they chose this to be the first one because it looked so pretty. And I would have to agree. And below the inlay of that box, we can see the number one. Drool. Just drool. And thanks, Yannis. The last edition of the album I would like to talk about is the double CD version on Cherry Red Records in their Preserved series. Here we see a new version of a censored cover with Hitler Was a Vegetarian Returning. Why? Why? Aside from that, the Violinist Fats line has been changed to read, See Double Trouble, coming soon to a theater or drive-in near you. This time hyping the res film that I'm sure we are all dying to come out. CD1 features both original tracks, plus the contents of both singles associated with the album. Satisfaction and the Beatles play the residents, and the residents play the Beatles. Those two singles could be discussed in this video, but for one thing, this video has gotten long enough, and those two singles are also complex enough to constitute their own video. So that will have to wait. The CD ends with what is called German Slide Music Parts 1 through 6, a recording of experimental music from July of 1975, in between the sessions where the actual album was recorded, that is. Were these meant for inclusion on the album? No, they don't fit the format. Were they meant for a future release? I don't know. Are they totally cool? You bet. The second CD contains an audio recording of what is called the Oh Mommy Show, as well as a concentrate of the backing tape used for the performance. The show at hand was on June 7th of 1976 and celebrated the fifth birthday of Rather Rip Records in Berkeley, which had a window display promoting the album which had to be taken down after two days due to public outrage. The full name of the performance was Oh Mommy Oh Daddy Can't You See It's True What the Beatles Did to Me I Love Lucy Did to You. And if you don't know, I Love Lucy was a TV sitcom in America in the 1950s. The show featured the group, Pamela Zabak, Peggy Honeydew, Snakefinger, as well as Arf and Omega. The group performed as mummies, which apparently made it very, very hard to perform. And Snakefinger was dressed as an artichoke with boots that were nailed to a board so they could tilt him while he played. A picture of this performance is on the back of fingerprints, as seen here on the 1988 reissue of the record. Also included on CD2, there is a 1982 rehearsal version of the letter, similar to the Assorted Secrets version, a 1992 remix of Land of a Thousand Dances, made by Scott Colburn, who masters the Preserved series, and four different live versions of related songs dating from 1983's Mole Show Tour to 2013's Randy, Chuck, and Bob era. An outtake reel from the original recording sessions is the last listed title, and a hidden track sounds to me like a radio ad for the Rather Rip Birthday Show. Aside from the musical releases, I should probably also mention that there was a multimedia floppy disc released by Euro Ralph in 1994. A walkthrough of this can be found on the Residence YouTube page. No clip about the Third Reich and Roll would be complete without talking about the promotional video. 
as Jim Knipfel wrote in the booklet of the Preserved series. In 1972, the residents were sharing the warehouse with a newspaper hoarding roommate, later to be revealed by Homer Flynn as Palmer Island, the older of the two island brothers. The floor-to-ceiling stacks of paper filled his room and had begun encroaching on the rest of the warehouse space. Looking to break the monotony of a long weekend, the residents glanced around and spotted those monstrous stacks of newspapers. Always eager to create their own reality of whatever was handy, they decided to create a reality out of newspapers. They fashioned newspaper suits for themselves, wrapped some instruments and a mic stand in newspapers, then filmed themselves performing in front of a wall of newspapers. Seeing that the first part of the clip was filmed in 1972, it's impossible to know what music they were playing to. But it's interesting to think about. But in 1976, they decided to use it as a promotional video for their upcoming album. New shots were filmed in stop motion using the set and props from Lionel's Fats, and the Third Reich and World video as we know it was born. The MoMA, along with various others, have since recognized the short as the first music video ever made, and it has been in the permanent collection of the MoMA since 1985. The video also caused controversy with people, saying that the outfits worn by the group were similar to the hoods and robes of the Ku Klux Klan. The images used in the advertising of the album also stirred up controversy and eventually had to be pulled. It's a real shame that some people fail to see it as what it was, a piss take, as Val called it. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, it means a satire. And another thing that Val mentioned is worth exploring. Mel Brooks' 1967 movie, The Producers, also known as Springtime for Hitler. If you're unaware of this film, I highly recommend that you check it out. And if you're not really into movies of the 60s, there was also a 2005 remake of sorts. Despite all controversy, or perhaps even helped by it, the Third Reich and Roll went on to become the album that would gain the residents some notoriety. And today, it must be regarded as a milestone of American music. As Jim Knipfel wrote for Cherry Red Records, Given its innovation and influence, its lasting relevance and brilliant thematic coherence, it could be well argued that the Third Reich and Roll was the resident Sgt. Pepper. Of course, the same argument could be made for Not Available, Eskimo, the commercial album, and The Mark of the Mole. So you see, right there's another reason why the residents are better and cooler than the Beatles. The Beatles only had one Sgt. Pepper. The residents had at least five. Plus, they knew how to do a cover album properly. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Val, Doopy Q, Imaginary Jack, and Yanis. An extra special shout out goes to Jim Knipfel, to Ian Shirley, to Uncle Willie, and all the contributors at the Meet the Residents wiki. Thank you very much. If you like this episode, please feel free to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment while you're at it. You can also share it. Any help is greatly appreciated. Stay tuned for the next episode of ResTube. And until then, you guys stay healthy and stay weird. Bye-bye now. Auf Wiedersehen.